you know this morning. I heard anything more than that rumor that we got yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to Abe Fortis about it. Yeah. I think he talked to you in Chicago. Well, he talked to one of my men. I didn't ask speaking, but uh, I'm just getting ready to go to New York. Do you have any idea who that might be? No, I haven't any idea. I would surmise it might be uh, down the line. Uh, they always refer to a cabinet officer. But I do know, I know that over in the Defense Department, uh, the uh, Navy have had under surveillance this fellow. He works for an assistant secretary by the name of Ballou. Yeah. In connection with some uh, deviation. Yeah. Now, uh, Baloo's name, if you will recall, was mentioned a number of times <laughs> times in the Billy Sylvester matter. But this fellow is in working in his office, and the Navy uh, have had him under surveillance. We took over that investigation uh, yesterday. Yeah. Because it involves uh, uh, the overall picture of any penetration into the security of uh, the was never assigned to the White House, but any security of the country. Yeah. Now, that is the nearest one. They, they said that this particular man had been under surveillance uh, and that uh, they were going to explode this bomb today. Now, the only person I know of who's been under surveillance uh, by any agency has been this man over in the Navy Department. Uh, we've had no, no one under surveillance, and I don't know of any other intelligence agency that, that has had one except the naval intelligence. No, I read that. What they said was that uh, they uh, they raised the question the way he combed his hair or the way he did something else, but uh, they they had no uh, act of his or he had done nothing. Uh, well, it was just uh, the suspicion that his mannerisms and so forth were such that they were suspicious. Yeah, he worked for me for four or five years, but he wasn't even suspicious to me. But uh, I guess you're going to have to teach me something about this stuff. Well, you know... I often wonder what the next crisis is going to be. Because, uh, I'll swear I can't recognize them. I don't know anything about it. Uh, it's a thing that you just can't tell. Sometimes, just like in the case of this poor fellow Jack and Three, yeah. there's no indication in any way. No. And I knew him pretty well, and uh, Delos did also, and there was no suspicion, no indication. There are some people who walk kind of funny and so forth, that you might kind of think are a little bit off, uh, off or maybe queer. But there was no indication of that in the Jenkins case. Right. I've never seen this full of but, uh, the, uh, We've had so much of these things, uh, these stories. For instance, that story that uh, uh, I think uh, Pearson uh, had uh, the information for you. We got an affidavit from that uh, source saying that it was, it was absolutely untrue. It was just said as a gag. We got that yesterday. Uh, what was that? That was the story of, uh, of this... Uh, uh, man being planted in the Republican National Committee and the frame-up of uh, Jenkins. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, Pearson had an affidavit uh, from uh, this particular person uh, who gave him the story and was going and, and consulted uh, Abe Fortas as to whether he should could use it or should print it. Fortas advised him it was libelous and should not be printed. And then we received word to make the investigation, and we did. We interviewed this body, got an affidavit completely denying the... Uh, the former affidavit and said it was just a gag. It's not a very funny gag, but I mean, that's the kind of uh, dirt and rumors that are going around. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, of course, as we get nearer to next Tuesday, I think uh, there's likelihood of a lot of this uh, rumoring going on that they uh, can't prove and will not be able to prove. But of course, uh, somebody, some one of these dirty columnists is very apt to carry something in a column. Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, so far, I, I haven't been able to get any more detail than was given to me yesterday, namely that this uh, man was a cabinet officer and uh, it would be exposed today. Uh, I've thought of all the cabinet officers that we have, and uh, some I don't know personally, but there are none of them that raise any suspicion in my mind. None in mine. You might do this. Uh, we might... Uh uh, if we, if this thing comes out on Tuesday, you might give some thought to what we ought to do with all secretaries and undersecretaries and assistant secretaries, and you and Deke uh, give a little thought to it from my standpoint, uh, kind of represent me, and uh, I don't want to uh, run you crazy over there, but I, I rather think that you ought to take everybody from me right on down. The thing that was started was back in Eisenhower's day. I remember when he was uh, elected. He sent for me to come to New York, and 
asked me to remain as uh, director. And then he, uh, he said, I'm going to have every cabinet officer that is to be appointed by me to call you and ask you to investigate them. And he did, John Foster Dulles, all the way down the line, including the fellow Vandenberg. Uh, and uh, uh, Vandenberg had not been appointed at that time. He had been largely a member of the president uh, of the president's party on the tour, on the campaign. And uh, we investigated every cabinet officer. We investigated all presidential appointments to commissions and so forth from that time up until the Kennedy administration came in. And then that was stopped. Now, they're all cabinet officers at the present time have been investigated, except the Postmaster General and the Secretary of Health, Welfare, and Education. They had all received uh, uh, investigations over five years ago, though. Now, that's a problem that I think we've, we've got to face up to as to how often these three checks ought to be made. Well, you give some thought to that, because I have implicit confidence in whatever you say we'll do. All right, I'll be very glad of it, Mr. President. Thank you, Avery. Thank you. Afternoon. 